Hello everyone, uh, slightly less bearded uh, reviewer today. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about a book that I've just been reading called There Is A God. And you can see it's been crossed out with There Is No God and There Is A God. That's because this is a book written by somebody called Anthony Flew, who for about, uh, about a half century was probably the world's most prominent atheist. So this is a chap who was the world's, one of the world's most prominent atheists or preeminent atheists. And he's probably the person that gave a lot of inspiration to people like uh, Dawkins and Sam Harris and uh, people that they call the new atheists. And uh, essentially what happened was he, he was the son of, a, I believe, a, a Christian minister. Eventually he, he, he got very interested in philosophy. Uh, became a professor of philosophy. Uh, in fact, he's worked in um, Aberd is it a professor of philosophy at the University of Kiel, had positions at Oxford, University of Aberdeen, University of Reading, and he lives apparently in Reading, England. So he became an atheist, was convinced of the philosophical basis of atheism, and in fact, he wrote an essay called Theology and Falsification. And this was the an, an essay in 1950, which was apparently the most widely reprinted philosophical publication of the last half, last half century. So he, he was essentially the kind of linchpin of uh, the kind of ideas of atheism. Um, basically, he has recently changed his mind and now believes that there's a God. So he's gone from atheism to theism. Uh, he now believes that there is a God. Uh, he believes that there's an omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. Is that is it, omniscient, is that a word? Omnipresent, omnipotent, uh, all-knowing uh, God. Um, who and, and that's the conclusion that he's got to. Um, <clears throat> so... About the actual book itself, it's not that big a book. And the first half, to be honest with you, is really about his journey, his, his kind of academic journey uh, and, you know, how he became professor and where he studied and what he did. And, um, the, you know, the, you know and, and then the last half of the book uh, is really about, um, you know, his ideas about why he believes that there is a God now. Um, to be honest with you, it, it, it's an interesting book. I, I got this because I was interested in why someone would go from atheism to theism and, and start believing in a God. And especially somebody who is so staunchly um, unbelieving in a God. So I wanted to see what, what really, what provoked that. And, uh, you know, for a person like this, Anthony Flew, it wasn't like an experience or, uh, you know, a tragedy or something or anything like that. It wasn't any kind of story like that. He comes to it from a philosophical point of view. Uh, and he's left with the conclusion that there has to be an um, omnipresent God at the at, behind all of this. To him, it's completely rational that there's a God... Um, at the end of it, at the, you know, behind the creation of the universe. Um, so for me, I mean, I am a theist anyway. Uh, um, as you probably know, uh, I, I am a practicing Muslim. So that goes without saying that I believe in um, a God um, in the way that he describes it. Um, um, and for me, you know, if I if I'd picked up this book, would that convince me? Uh, if I wasn't, uh, probably not. So I I didn't think it it read that well in terms of convincing you that there isn't a god, which is a shame. So I I think this is not really a book. If you're somebody that wants to, you know, come down on the off the fence about whether there is a god, there isn't a god, or just interested in the arguments for that, I don't think this is necessarily the best book. If you're interested in, in, in reading maybe a bit more about the story of somebody that's come from uh, from atheism to theism, again, I'm not sure if this is the best book. 
Um, he's, this is somebody, I, I'm not sure if this is the best book for that, but, I, I, you know, it seems like he's in the world of this kind of philosophy. He's a, a pretty big name. So for him to have become a, a, a theist uh, was quite a big deal. Um, what else can I say about this book? Um, um, I, I found it difficult to understand everything, but it did reinforce some of the ideas I had about, um, you know, how did life occur? And he, and he does explain that, look, you know, we, we may understand the mechanisms of life, but we still don't understand why life at all. Why would something come out of nothing? Again, he says, this doesn't make any sense. We can, we, science can explain maybe the mechanisms of things, but it still can't explain uh, why. And that's the big thing. It seems to come out of this. Why? Why life at all? There's no reason for something to come out of nothing. And he gives a good example of, you know, this the kind of like a marble chair. You could look at a marble chair and you could take it, you know, and, it, it, you know, but to say that even after billions of years, would it develop consciousness? Would it develop awareness? No, it wouldn't. Um, and so again, he comes back to the point that um, there's no good reason for why life should even be here. Why should there be any life at all? Uh, even if you believe that the universe just existed and has always existed, uh, to him it doesn't make any sense uh, for why there should be life. It doesn't, to him it doesn't seem to make any sense. Um, anyway, um, you know, there, there are other things that he does go into which you start to think about. The idea that if there is an omnipresent creator, then obviously he is out with not only space, but also time. And so he does go into that in a bit more depth about uh, the fact that time is, you could see it as, as almost like a fourth dimension, uh, which is what sometimes people describe it as. Uh, so things are present in, in, in place, you know, is it what, a length, width, height, and, uh, and also time. So they're, they're, they're there in, in four dimensions um, and that God would be out with all of those. So it would make for certain things which you have to wrap your head around. For example, God can't forget anything because it, there was no past to forget and um, he must be doing everything right now because there is no future or past if you're outside of time. And if everything happens, it all happens at once, um, which is funnily enough a very interesting Islamic concept, the idea of God says be and it is, kun fire kun. Anyway, um, he has a discussion with a Christian theologian at the end. And so it, it does come from, a, at the end, he does uh, talk about some of the Christian ideas uh, and concepts of God from Christianity. Um, I don't think Anthony Flew has looked at the other religions of the world. I think the only one that he seems to be familiar with is Christianity. And, um, and that's sort of, there's a discussion at the end with um, a Christian theologian uh, called um, N.T. Wright. So he talks about that. Um, the other interesting thing that I think came out of this book was people often talk about Dawkins, uh, not Dawkins, Stephen Hawking and Albert Einstein as being complete atheists. Actually, with this, he, he says that they weren't atheists. Uh, they never said that they were complete atheists and that they, in fact, did come out to, with this idea of a kind of super rational, uh, super, you know, kind of being at the end of it. Some, some kind of mind, some kind of super mind that controlled all of this. So again, uh, that was kind of news because people often talk about Einstein being an atheist or Stephen Hawking being an atheist. And although they maybe don't come down in, in, in terms of an organised religion, but he says that they did, there was nothing to say that they, they wouldn't uh, believe in the idea of a kind of rational creator. Anyway, that's this book, uh, There Is a God, uh, with a no crossed out, by Anthony Flew, um, written with uh, obviously a ghostwriter, Roy Abraham Vargas. But it's about Anthony Flew, who became a theist 
I started believing in God after 50 years of being one of the foremost atheists in the world. Um, I hope you enjoy that. Might be an interesting one to, to look at. Um, but I do have other books talking about the existence of God and I'm uh, probably going to read them to try and get my head around uh, the concept in terms of the arguments. Okay, hope you enjoy that. Thank you. And uh, um, see you all next review. Bye.